Hey there folks, so I want to talk to you a little bit about thesis statements today. Uh, I know that you have the template for them in Blackboard, but I did notice as I was looking at your, uh, you know, your ideas that some of you may have uh, maybe misconstrued, um, you know, exactly what's needed in the thesis. So I wanted to record a video to make sure that we're all on the right track. Okay, so when it comes to thesis statements, the big thing that you want to focus on is clearly identifying your argument, right? I know we talked about that in terms of the illustration example essay, uh, but that was a little bit of a different kind of argument. Since we have research now, uh, we want to make sure that our thesis statement uh, has a little bit more to it, okay? And that big thing uh, that we really want to make sure it has is the counter argument. That's the only thing that gets added to the thesis statement, uh, but that is the difference between an illustration example essay, like essay one, and the uh, essay three, the argumentative essay, right? Uh, we we want to make sure we give both sides uh, not equal time by any stretch of the means, but we, we want to make sure that we give um, the opposing side to your argument just a little bit of time, but with a purpose, right? That purpose, of course, is to then uh, <clears throat> then tell them that that, that counter argument is bogus, right? That's our major goal here. So when it comes to thesis statements, right, you want to make sure that your counter argument goes first, right? That's why if you notice in the template, you know, something like while some people think whatever the counter argument is, then you include your statement of purpose, then you include your forecast elements, right? You want to put it first so that it kind of gets buried in the thesis statement, right? You want it then you want the reader to see it, know what's coming, but then at the same time just sort of you know, make it like the, I don't know, like the less valuable piece of information. Because right after that counter argument, the beginning of your sentence, you make an assertive statement identifying what you believe and why you believe it, right? And so in the thesis, you want it to go first. In your essay, you want it to be the last body paragraph. Now I'll talk about why this makes sense using a metaphor in just a minute, uh, but Basically, the argumentative reason for doing this, the rhetorical reason for doing this, is because you want to make sure that in the thesis, your reader knows your counterargument is coming, right? Remember that the thesis is that heads up to your reader, right? This is the thing that we're going to be talking about today, um, you know, that kind of thing. But in your essay, you want to make sure that you have the space first to identify exactly what it is you are arguing. You want them on your side before you say, hey, and here's what some other people say, right? Identify that counter argument in, you know, one to two sentences, nothing drastic, right? Because you don't want to give it so much space that your reader is like, oh yeah, I really like that counter argument, right? That's what I want to talk about, uh, or that's what I want to believe. And after you identify that, then you say, but here's why it's wrong, okay? And you make that clear. So I said before that I would kind of illustrate this using a little bit of a metaphor. It's not really a metaphor, it's more of a story, uh, but imagine this, right? We all remember when we were young and we did dumb stuff. Uh, you know, not to classify it as dumb, but I mean, really, if we're gonna break it down, we all do dumb things as kids. And so imagine this, you're, you're 15, 16 years old, uh, this story, full disclosure, did not happen to me. Uh, I, I was kind of a goody two-shoes when I was young. I'm still a goody two-shoes. There's no outgrowing that. Um, but, you know, imagine you're 15, 16 years old, and you get a text message from your friends, and your friends are like, hey, let's go hang out at, uh, you know, at the, uh, I don't know, at somewhere. By my house, the, the thing that people used to like to hang out with for whatever reason was just like this sump in a park uh, that was right down the road from my house. I never went during the nighttime, of course, but you know, they did. And so, right, so they text you, your friends, you're 15, 16 years old, your friends text you and they say, hey, come hang out with us, right? And of course, to get into this area, you have to, you know, go walk a little bit, uh, which means like, how are you gonna get out of the house, right? You have to think about that. Uh, how are you going to, um, you know, get to the area? Because guess what, there's a fence there. Uh oh, uh, and you have to figure out how to get past it to get to your friends. Well, so as this 15, 16 year old you is walking down the road, you get to the fence, you start to climb it and you cut your hand, right? You get a little cut 
Um, but you know, it's deep enough that it stings, not deep enough you're gonna lose your hand or anything, um, but you know, it does bother you. And so, you know, you climb the fence, you hang out with your friends, it's great, you get back home, you sneak up into your room, things are good. And then the next morning, your mom calls you down and says, hey, pancakes, it's your favorite, right? And you're going, oh God, pancakes are my favorite. And you totally forget that you've got that cut on your hand, right? So you go downstairs, you start making pancakes, you pick up the knife, and then you remember, right? You wince a little bit, you're like, oh, but you try to keep it cool because guess what? No one's supposed to know that you were out. And so, you know, you're, you, of course, your mom catches you, right? She sees that look in your face, right? She hears the little... And of course, it's like sharks in the water, right? With blood in the water. Um, if your mom's anything like mine, she's very smart, very clever, and she always knows everything. I don't know how she does it. Um, but, you know, so then the questions start, okay? And, you know, you, you kind of have that sort of moment where she's like, well, what, what in the world happened? Because she knows it didn't happen at the house. And so you go, well, uh, you know, I was I was out last night and I ended up, you know, I, I cut myself. It was not a big deal. Um, you know, it's fine. And so you try to get back to your pancakes thinking, I'm like, hey, I think I just nailed this, right? Mom doesn't know. She didn't figure it out. Awesome. And so what happens next? Well, you know, you should have realized because your mom's head goes, Whoop, looks right at you. And then you go, oh God, what do I do? And she's like, well, well what do you mean you were out last night? And then you go, oh, well, you know what? I, I was just... You know, I was just, I was just doing some things. Uh, you know, it's not a big deal. I was just walking around. Um, you know, saw some friends, no big deal. And then she's like, well, then what happened to your hand, right? And you go, well, you know, I was climbing a fence and that happened. But, oh my God, it hurts really bad, right? Oh, I can't believe, you know, now you start to play it up. And now that you're, you're kind of cornered, right? You have to talk about this now. And, you know, you kind of made your defense. You said you're out with friends kind of vague that could have been at any time uh but now that she's kind of got you boxed in you have to talk about how you cut your hand you know oh, i was climbing a fence and uh, you know i you know when was the last time i had a tetanus shot uh you know like really it's kind of deep i think i might need some stitches i i don't really know uh you know, my fingers are feeling a little tingly right and so all of a sudden now you're you're kind of using information to overshadow the fact that you've cut yourself while you were out and you weren't supposed to be. And so, you know, the hope, uh, you know, in the mind of this, this 15, 16 year old kid is that, you know, the fact that you've taken it and you've kind of buried that information, right, that you cut it on a fence with all of this, you know, medical stuff, you're hoping that those mom instincts are going to kick in, right? And that she's a little bit concerned, right? She wants to make sure that your hand's not going to fall off and you're not going to get tetanus and get a staph infection or whatever, right? And of course, for moms, they know things. That doesn't work. But in your essay, it does, right? So you you take this information when you give it to your, your reader at first, right? You bury it, just like we did when we were telling mom, like, oh, yeah, I cut myself last night when I was hanging out with some friends. It's not a big deal, um, you know? And then once we kind of put the information, we, you know, we start just kind of, well, as a kid, you just babble, right? But you are identifying why you believe the way you believe in your essay, uh, and then you come to your counter argument last. You identify it, and then you try to refute it, right? You bury it. Uh, but you're not burying it in the sense that, you know, you're just pretending that it didn't exist, right? It like you like like a kid would if they cut themselves and they got busted for sneaking out. What you're doing is you're you're kind of dismantling the counter argument and you're explaining why, uh, even though people do hold that to be true, why it's not valid, right? And so for the overall structure of your essay, right, you, in your introduction, you're giving context, you know, you're with the hook right away, that first sentence, you're getting your reader interested with something that they will care about. Now, this could be a provocative statement, it could be something else, um, you know, a statistic or some sort of data, that totally works. Um, when it comes to the rest of your intro, give us any information that we need. Uh, I saw in one of the uh, ideas that there was a discussion about, uh, it was about marijuana, right? And there was this discussion about CBD and THC, right? Identifying what those are. Awesome. That sounds great. Um, you know, and then you move into your thesis statement. Once your reader has the basis of understanding for your topic and your ideas, then you go into your argument in that thesis, right? Identify the counter argument real quick. While some people believe X, Y, Z, 
what you actually believe, right? That comes next. And that last sentence uh, in your intro is going to be obviously the most specific sentence that you've got. And then you move into your argument, right? You've already identified your forecast elements in your thesis. So then one by one, you kind of go through those. You want to make sure you have at least three main points that you're arguing in this essay uh, for your, your own argument. Um, so what you do is you just kind of go through those forecast elements, just like we did in the illustration example essay. And then you get to that counter argument. You identify what the counter argument is, give a little bit of information, but spend the majority of time uh, talking about why that counter argument just doesn't hold water why it's not valid, why it's not as valid as the argument that you're making, right? So you want to do that. So, you know, when it comes to the story that I told, right, that's like a justification for why we want to argue it the way we do. Uh, but when it comes to the overall structure of the counter argument, remember, identify it and then, you know, just kind of not bury it. Like I said, in the, um, in that story, right, you don't bury it just like a kid would, uh, but you dismantle it and kind of take it apart and explain why it's in, invalid or incorrect or somehow incomplete. Um, so you want to make sure that you do that uh, in your thesis, right? Identify it uh, and then identify your position. But again, there your position holds much more space, much more prominence, right? The counter argument just gets kind of tacked on at the beginning, you know, while some people say this or while this particular group, you know, doesn't feel that vaccines are safe for kids, um, you know, whatever that counter argument is, uh, you go into more detail in that final body paragraph just before the conclusion, okay? Um, you know, and you you identify that counter argument and then you you dismantle it, okay? You take it apart. You make sure your reader uh, can clearly understand that your perspective is the better perspective, the one that's more grounded in fact, the one that's more grounded in uh, you know in in genuine logic and ideas. Right. And so that's how you want to structure this essay. If you want to have more information about the, you know, how to kind of assert your ideas, uh, my best suggestion for you would be to go check out the video on the illustration example essay organization, um, because really we're doing the same thing. Just instead of talking about examples from our own lives, from that illustration example essay, like we did there we're bringing in research to back up our ideas. Now, of course, there you can, um, you know, take that research, whatever your scholarly sources are saying, and make it applicable by showing, uh, you know, how that works, right? Because we are still showing, not telling. Uh, but you know, you want to make sure that your your sources and what your sources are saying is at the foreground. Okay, so you want to make sure that you do that. All right, so that was my quick discussion about thesis statements and kind of the overall organization of this essay. If you have any questions, as always, please don't hesitate to send me an email, come to office hours, or get in touch with me uh, in any way, shape, or form. If you have, um, you know, something that you need, definitely just let me know, okay? I'm here to help you. Don't forget that, all right? Especially at this point in the term, we're right at the end. So I want to help you however I can. All right, you guys, so have a great rest of your day. Do great things. and.